thousands left stranded at the Kodoka International Airport and they are unable to watch the game between the Black Stars of Ghana and the USA in this year's uh, World Cup in Brazil. We're going to bring you details of that here on today's big story. So, uh, some of us are from far and far. Some of us, some of us don't live here in Accra, from far and came here. But so now they say, uh, they say uh, now I said we should go back to the uh, uh, this in stadium. But stadium, we know that it's a trick. That they, they, they are doing. So no, we, we understand. But uh, one, one thing that I, like, I don't understand is that we used to pay our tax. Like, we are, we are, we are the taxpayers. So why, 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 like we want to, want to, want to go and support our, our like, uh, our nation. My name is Prince Mink and welcome to today's big story. Tonight we'll find out exactly what's going to become of the number of Black Star supporters who are left stranded at the Kodokai International Airport. And also, what is the fate of the number of supporters who are already in Brazil as Ghana plays its first game in this year's World Cup? Well, earlier today, over 100 Ghanaians who are on government sponsorship to cheer the Black Stars of Ghana, the World Cup in Brazil, uh, were left stranded at the Kodokai International Airport here in Accra. All well, the supporters were expected to have been airlifted uh, to Brazil to support uh, Ghana in the ongoing World Cup. But the angry supporters who spent the night in the open at the Kodokai International Airport say they had to battle with mosquitoes throughout the night. Have you been assured of leaving the country As today? Me, personally, I've been assured because I, I am by the authorities that um, since I have my accreditations, maybe I may go. Maybe. maybe. And from the look of things, um, to my side, I don't think there will be any good news. Yeah. Why do you think there's not going to be any good news? Uh, because um, they, they said we should come today, we should come tomorrow, and I've been here since last week. Yeah, and yes, my name has not mentioned, and um, I don't think my name is in it because I learned um, there have been one or two um, issues behind back doors. Yeah. For all of us, deserve to go. Speaking to the former Adenta MP, Honorable Edu Asari, he's a, a member, he's actually one of those who are uh, helping organize and, and facilitate uh, the airlifting process of the number of supporters who were left stranded early on today at the Kotoka International Airport. We'll also be joined in the studio by my uh, colleague Matilda Womega, who was on this particular beat. And she's going to tell us uh, exactly what uh, was going through the minds of a number of these supporters that were left stranded. We have also gotten a hint of uh, uh, the situation with uh, other supporters who are supposed to be chairing the Black Stars in Brazil. And what we know is that uh, some of them are living in uh, some conditions which they have described as deplorable and they are unhappy with the state in which they are in in Brazil. We'll be getting some answers shortly when we hit the phone lines and speak to uh, Edu Asai, who's the former uh, MP for Adenta and also one of the key members organizing or facilitating the process whereby a number of these supporters will be airlifted. But let me let you know that the leader of the Millennium Supporters Union also said authorities are working feverishly to emplane the stranded supporters. And according to him, three flights have already left uh, for Brazil, saying the stranded supporters will soon join uh, their colleagues there. And uh, also we've been told that uh, Buko Banku is a boxer here in, in Ghana. Uh, he, he is also one of the many uh, who have been left stranded at the Kodokai International Airport. But information trickling in right now uh, indicates that uh, he, he has given up. He no longer wants to go to Brazil. Uh, what does this mean uh, for uh, the organizers? And also, what does this mean to government? And uh, we, we also picked up information that the supporters said they, their expectations or their hopes were raised uh, so high that uh, they feel they've been let down. So what are organizers doing at this particular moment to ensure that these supporters who are uh, bent on going into Brazil will be airlifted at least by close of day or perhaps uh, tomorrow? We'll be finding out shortly here on today's big story.
Welcome back. Thank you very much for staying on to today's big story here on Joy News on Multi TV. We can now speak to uh, the former Education and Sports Minister, Obi Amwa, uh, with regards to the fact that fears that many of government's uh, sponsored Black Star supporters uh, could be stranded in Brazil seem to be materializing. As we already know, that hundreds of uh, uh, supporters, Black Star supporters, have been stranded at the Kuruka International Airport. And those already in Brazil are saying that the conditions in which they are in are not worth home, uh, you know, writing home about it. Let's go over and speak to Obi Amwa, uh, former sports minister. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us on today's big story, Obi. Good evening, it's the uh, former deputy sports minister. Very well. Thanks for that. Yes. Thanks for the correction. Now, Honourable, uh, going to the issue at hand right now, uh, thousands of supporters uh, who, who are supposed to be cheering the Black Stars on at least by today, or in the other games, are still stranded at the Kodokai International Airport. Is this the point where you would say, I told you so, government? Well, um, thank you and good evening. Well, not really. I don't really know the arrangements which were made, except that we were informed some weeks back that probably um, the government would be able to send 500 um fans to the games. Um, as to how it turned out this way, it's quite unfortunate, and I don't know the kind of planning that um, they did, but I don't expect um, the whole government to be arranging such um, a flight, and then we, we get bogged down with the excuses, and then, um, then what I heard this afternoon that they said that there was no money, or the monies were not released on time. This is all lack of planning, and it's so unfortunate that um, some persons are stranded. Probably, if they know they will get stranded also in Brazil, they might as well let them go home instead of sending them all the way there to face difficulties. But, but listening to a number of these supporters, they are bent on going to the end of the world to get into Brazil to support the stars. Now, one point they raised earlier on was that they don't understand why actors and, 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 and musicians will be sent uh, to Brazil instead of them. Now, do they have a point there? And, and what would be your specific advice to organizers, to us aware, uh, douse their expectations? Well, as I said, this, this is a whole government arrangement. So the government should just decide what to do next. Um, it's not just organizers. It's the government that is sending them to Brazil. As you said, already they've sent um, some persons there, including the ambassadors. Mm. But if for any reason they think that it would be difficult to send them, they should let them know. And it's far better than keeping them stranded at the airport, not knowing when they will leave before the difficulties and hardships at this time of the day. And they're already they're expecting to play our first match tonight. Um, I don't know how they're going to address this, but I think it's very unfortunate. And the best way is to let the rest stay and then find means of catering for those who are already there. Um, we have seen some pictures, they are not the best. And I heard this afternoon that by one of the organizers that the um, monies were not released on time and they had to make do with what they had. But it's, it's not good enough. But how easy would it be communicating to the supporters that look, uh, we couldn't do it for you, go home, uh, you can watch the matches from your homes. How, how easy would that be? The, the difficulty is that probably they've even charged flights and everything. So how come the flights are annoying? How come we, we, the, the, the fans are not boarding their flights? Is it that they paid for the flights and the, 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 the flights are annoying? Or is it that they haven't paid at all? If they haven't taken that step, then the best way is to let them go home. That if indeed they've paid and they've been assured that they will have the, the planes to send the fans, then they should, they should have a deadline. They cannot stay at the airport forever. Hmm. They should decide that come with the next question that was, if you not be able to make it, they might as well stay at home and then they look at the rest of the fans in Brazil. But, but, but talk about... So got terrain, yeah. yes. Talk about the soccer fans. I was just going to say that how crucial is it for, for us to get them there? Uh, because I'm already picking from the grounds that, look, in the, the U.S. has a number of supporters who are going to be gunning for them later on this evening. And for Ghana, uh, the, the number is not that much, though. But, but how crucial is it for us to get these people airlifted to, to cheer on the Black Stars? 
Well, it's all planning, and uh, I cannot pretend to have all the answers. But of course, when we played in Germany, it was in Europe. Uh, we, 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 we spent only hundreds, a few hundreds of supporters. But the whole of Europe, there are a lot of Ghanaians, and they all fought in for our matches, and we had the full support. Mm. I don't know how they arranged to get Ghanaians outside Ghana, that is, those closer to Brazil, to also ensure that they go and support a team. If, if they is hoping to depend on only 500 supporters from Ghana to go and fill the stadium, and I'm afraid in that purpose would have been defeated. So as to whether it's so crucial to get the work is here uh, to Brazil before we can get uh, supporters to cheer our team, I don't think that's the point, because I'm sure uh, some have even gotten there through their own means. Mm. I said as if we paid for those who are supposed to be airlifted, then we have to make sure we send them. By setting that line, then we, we take a decision that they should stay home. Mm. Now, now talk about those who are already in Brazil, those that have been airlifted. We're also picking information that uh, the conditions in which they live in, in as per some of the host, ho hostels or uh, places where they are lodging, is not worth writing home. I'm, I'm going to have our director put that shot on TV now uh, so viewers can, can see what, what we are talking about. But uh, going forward, exactly what can organizers do to, to as it were, you know, psych these supporters are who who probably may be disappointed at this particular moment. Well, if <clears throat> as ministry acting on behalf of government, you decide to send funds to cheer the staff, then you should make sure that at least they have the, the, the facilities. You don't send them there in the poorest of conditions. You get stranded, and then we hear all these excuses that money was not released on time. So. We, we couldn't book for the best places, etc. I don't think it's good enough. Um, uh, as I said, it's all part of planning. And this, you know, it's not only organized. We, we, if you travel and tours, I heard this afternoon that when it comes to accommodation, even those travel and tours companies are not involved. Mm. They just assist them. So it means that a team was sent there, a committee was set up, a team was sent there to secure accommodation for, for fans. So how come they are staying in these deplorable conditions? It means that something went wrong somewhere. And the earlier we corrected it, the better. Of course, after all, we have a mission in Brazil. Mm. And they, they could have started the whole process. And I do think we could have ended up in such a situation. Uh, something really has gone wrong, and then people will have to answer for that. Now, Ghanaian boxer Bukum Banku, he was built to get into Brazil latest by this night. Uh, like many of the other supporters, he was also stranded. He said he's no longer going, he's going to go back home and forget about this trip. Now, what would you say to organizers that they should tell the supporters to go back home? Would that be a yes or a no? Well, as I said, I don't know who's in charge now. I understand the ministers are in Brazil, but obviously there are some members of the committee who are still in Ghana. I heard um, could you address that? We'll, we'll be putting him on the line shortly, yeah. Yeah, they start talking about <coughs> the arrangements and the fact that they couldn't get funded on time. But the the impression is that once they are at the airport, that means they are expecting to be sent to Brazil. There's one of two things, either a commercial airline or a chartered flight. Mm -hmm. So what has happened to that flight? If it's a commercial airline, then they should expect the airline to come and lift them, which is chartered. Why well, obviously they would have paid some amount and then they expect the 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 flight um, owners to deliver. Okay. So as it is I as I told you within a certain number of hours if they are able to have let them they just let them go home. Very well. Thank I you. I mean they can't stay at the airport forever. In the conditions at the airport they are not <laughs> those conditions they are not meant to host thousands or hundreds of uh, fans who are stranded. We should let them go home and then bad luck they didn't plan well. Then next time, we plan better. They'll be disappointed, of course, that after all the hype and the uh, goodbyes to their family, they really ended up to stay in Ghana. But they are well. all in Ghana, so we should take it as part of that one and move on. All right. Thank you very much uh, for talking to us, uh, Honorable Obiyamwa. He's a former deputy.
Education and Sports Minister speaking to us here on today's Big Story. But let me quickly move to uh, Matilda Womega. She's been on this beat all this while. And, of course, she saw all the supporters and what they had to say, most of them virtually crying. What was running through your mind as you spoke to most of them? Uh, well, uh, I, I'm not so much into sports, but then I was like, what's the big deal? What's at stake? Uh, because I know getting there is not does not even assure you of watching the match at the stadium. Mm. You need to go through an, a whole lot of process. Uh, process again to get there. If you have to go through all this process in order to get there, I don't think there is so much... Uh, why should you worry yourself to go through all this? Because uh, some of these uh, uh, self-acclaimed supporters, I should say, because according to this committee that I spoke to, who mm. are organizing this Ghana-Brazil um, tournament thing. They tell me that uh, some of these people are not supporters. They are just. No, what people, are they? They, 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 are, they don't know where they are coming from because f from them, they gave uh, a specific number to these supporters. But, but is that the impression you get when, when you spoke to them? I mean. Well, you know, when I spoke to them, they, they told me that they had paid so much to some of their leaders as to who exactly they paid to. Some of them were able to mention some names, but others tell me, oh, to this our leader in our area, if you want to go anywhere, you, we all go through him and he has always been doing it for us. Today we've been calling him, his number is off. You know, many of them were really frustrated. And going through all this, I, 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 well, I was told that uh, some of these people actually uh, you had to use middlemen, mm. I, I should say. And some of these middlemen is what has resulted in many of them being stranded. At the Kuduka International Airport. Now, now, you Airport. heard Obi Amwa, the yeah. former Deputy Education and Sports Minister, saying that, look, it's time organizers tell the supporters who are stranded to go home. Do you think they will be able to accept this if this is supposed to be the stance of, of, of the organizers? I, I think eventually they would have to accept this, but this should take a lot of effort from the security because what I saw earlier at the airport wasn't a good thing. Uh, even me trying to get them to talk to me. You heckled. Uh, you you know, pushed them and shoved away. Exactly. Mm. So uh, if these people have to be told to go home, they can't make it to Brazil, I think it would take a lot of effort from their security to make that make sure that these people indeed are calm mm. else many of them i'm sure they are going to take the law into their own hands and, and which, which of the organizers did you see and what have they been telling uh, you i spoke to um or say I, uh, I think he's called or say something mm. he's a member of the committee he told me that they are going with a specific number that is each uh, supporters union you know, they give you we are we are giving you 10 slots mm. 10 slot. So out of these 10 slots is what make up the total number. And these are the people we are going we are going to Brazil with. But I, they don't know for some strange reasons, people who are so desperate, yeah, people are desperate to go to Brazil. Some of them had to pay some monies to some people. And this is what has resulted in many of them being stranded at the airport. Mm. So and, and we're hoping to bring uh, Honorable Eduard into the conversation now, exactly. but you spoke to him as well. W what has he been telling you? Uh, well, he told me they cannot be blamed for what is happening because they are working with a, a particular number. They have airlifted about uh, 400 already. Mm. Uh, they are about to take the last badge and after that there will be nothing again and no one should hold them responsible because for them they are going according to the list that they have so uh, I, I, it's a back and forth something the supporters are seeing this uh, the organizers too are seeing this <laughs> uh, we don't know but uh, I think these organizers need to come up clear with this because some of these accusation leveled against them is not a good thing mm. and, and finally Bukum Banku uh, Ghanaian boxer, you spoke to his manager. Yeah. Did you see him as well? I didn't see Bukum Banku and Aite Powers, but I saw the manager who was at the uh, sports stadium and he told me, yes, Bukum Banku and uh, Aite Powers are supposed to be v on the... Very well. Let, 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 me, let me bring in Honorable Eduasare. He just joined us on the line. Uh, Honorable Eduasare is part of the organizers for uh, airlifting a number of these supporters who are stranded at the Kodoka International Airport. Honorable uh, what, what's happening to the supporters now? Are you going to tell them to go home?
Hello, Honorable Edward Asare. Hello. Yes, good evening. Welcome to today's big story. A lot of the supporters are stranded. They want to get into Brazil. Uh, what are you telling them now? Well, it appears we've, we've lost him. We'll try and raise him back on the line and find out whether they're going to tell them to go home or perhaps they're making some arrangements for them. But back to Bukum <laughs> Banku. Uh, you spoke to his manager. <laughs> what did he tell you? Well, he told me they are supposed to be on official ticket uh, from the former president, Jerry John Rawlins. He actually assured them of going, and they had gone through all the necessary process to enable his client in Aite Powers go to Brazil. But for some reasons, he 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 can't even explain. It, it looks like it's a battle. Let's, let's hold on to that explanation. Honorable uh, Duasar is a former MP for Adenta. He's also part of the uh, number of uh, you know people sitting on this committee that's processing or facilitating the supporters to get into Brazil. Uh, Honorable. So what have you been telling the supporters? Okay. What I'm hearing is that he's in a meeting, but the line has dropped again. We'll, we'll try we'll try getting him back uh, on the line, and then we can find out from him exactly what will be their final uh, stance uh, as per the fate of the supporters who are stranded at the Kodokai International Airport. But we're now talking about Bukum Banku. He's a Ghanaian boxer. He, he was also stranded, and, and his manager has been saying a few things to Matilda Omega, our reporter. But uh, Honorable Edouard is back. Honorable, good evening. Welcome to today's big story. Uh, good evening. So the Black Star supporters are stranded at the Kodoka International Airport. We saw uh, those visuals earlier on. What, are, what have you been telling them? Uh, are you going to let them go home or they will still go to Brazil? Uh, when you say Black Star supporters, I don't know which Ghanaian is not a Black Star supporter at this stage. But, but those, they obviously are Black Star supporters, okay. aren't they? No, the point I'm making here is that all of us are Black Star supporters. Absolutely. <laughs> but we, are all not go, we don't, all don't have to go to the airport and converge there and hope to go to Brazil. That is what is happening at the airport. Most of the people you find there don't really have any business to win at the airport. You mean you don't know them? We don't have any reason, or they don't have any reason to be at the airport because we have been dealing with the um, supporters, various supporters unions as we have them. We shortlisted them sometime in April, and so we've been working with their leadership all this while. And as we speak now, we know we've dealt with the bigger chunk of the, uh, the representation of the uh, various um, supporters unions already. They are in Brazil. We only have a simple more to add up with. Those left to be lifted are uh, some of the sponsors that we had, uh, the representative of the sponsors that we had, and the other ones we are supposed to to lift, and a few, let me say a few um, remnants of the supporters unions. So if you are seeing any high volumes of numbers at the airport, these are people who by themselves have gone to obtain visas without recourse to the uh, Ministry of Youth But, but we, we, we spoke to some of them, and they told mm -hmm. us that they went through uh, some processes where they, are, uh, they, they, they actually filled some forms uh, aimed at getting them into Brazil. And you're not yeah, aware of this? I, I, your line is really bad, but if I can hear you, what you are saying is that some said they went through some processes. Exactly. The processes, they, some of them found their way mm -hmm. there by themselves without, as I said, recourse to any uh, laid down uh, 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 regulation that we had in place. So if they managed to go through those systems without any uh, such mandate from us, it, it doesn't mean once they finish that process and they come to us, we should uh, place them uh, a space on the on the on the flight. We are hard pressed with time. What are you going to tell them now? Are you going to let them go? Oh, we lost them. There you go. <laughs> Some of them were were were, were obviously uh, aliens. I mean, listening to on the word but you yeah. spoke to them. You were very close to them. Uh, d is that a point that comes across? <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking at this whole situation, you can't really tell because some of them were actually holding their passport with their faces 
others had just the accreditation mm -hmm. telling me they had to they had paid a lot to get this as in who exactly they did all this to is what is, should be the question now who did these people go to that should be the question we should be asking and coming from him the committee if he is saying that indeed these people did not go through him then i'm sure these people might have gone to some other persons who are not members of this committee that was set up by government mm -hmm. to airlift uh, supporters to brazil very well yeah. i'm gonna have to thank you very much matilda omega but uh Bukon Banku is not going that's no he said he is not going again his manager confirmed that to me because of this back and forth thing right. it started on sunday throughout to today and they've been told to come tomorrow again and Bukon Banku and Aite powers they are saying they are not going any longer very well <laughs> thanks a lot matilda omega uh, she's our reporter, of course. She was on that spectacular beat, obviously telling us about uh, what had transpired earlier on with regards to a number of Black Star supporters that were stranded at the Kodoka International Airport. Coming up shortly is Joy News Interactive, and we're going to talk about Black Stars versus the United States of America. My prediction, I'll tell you shortly. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. Time now for Joy News Interactive, and we're all getting ready, warmed up in the studio. Marion Therese here with... Hello, uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm, ready. I'm good. <laughs> and as you can see, uh, we're, we're so getting ourselves... Shout to you. Whoa. Chest. There you go. Hey, <laughs> well, looks, like, some American... looks like we're teasing, we're teasing them, huh? the That's what they know. You, you, they know best, you know? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We play with we our feet. And, and you guys, and, uh, you play with your hands, and now you want to what? Come and tease us. 3-1 hey, three, three hey. against you. See how ready I am. <laughs> yeah, I know. What... I just need the cap and then I'll be done. Tonight <laughs> I'm going to put on the cap. It's just that when I wear it, you will see my face. So well, I decided, let me just spare them the face. And, and, but my and eye red. Absolutely. And mm. towers are washed with red, yellow, green, and a big black star. But you won't believe that. It's all over the place. There's no traffic in town right now. Wow. From 4 p.m. <laughs> I've been watching around, asked a few people, where are you, any traffic? No, not at all. Everybody has cleared. Wow. And they've gone home to prepare themselves. At least uh, it's a working day tomorrow. So mm. the idea is that you go home early, take a real good, good rest. nap. Yeah. And then wake up, watch the match, scream your head off if you have to, sleep if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> wake up the next morning and soldier on until our next match. So I am gearing up for it. Okay. Since you didn't ask me of my prediction... I think it's going to be 3-1. So. It's going to be 3-1 yeah, to against, Ghana. Yeah, uh, USA. Okay. Yeah. And you're dollarizing it, or you're not part of the dollarization? No, I'm not part of the do I'm part of the CDization. CDization. <laughs> I like that. There you <laughs> go, Over to you. So, wherever you are, welcome to your interactive show. My name, as always, is Marian Toure. Mm -hmm. Welcome to your show. We are back. We are fired and I am even fired. If you had a thermometer to come and put it here and check, you know that my temperature is running above uh, 200 degrees, if I can call it that, but not a sick kind of 200 degrees, an excited kind of 200 degrees. I am sizzling hot and waiting for the game tonight. We are all fired up. 
And I know wherever you are, you are fired up and you're waiting. But you see, this show is about you. It's about interactivity, about where you are and what you're thinking about what is trending on social media. So join us on Facebook.com slash join us on TV. Comment on every post we put there. We will amplify your voice by sharing what you are sharing with the rest of the world. And uh, you can tweet us at join news on TV, at JN Interactive GH. And my personal handle, at MN Turi. I'll be happy to retweet your thoughts and share what you're sharing with us with the rest of the world. Join us. I am at multitvworld.com. That remains our email address and our WhatsApp number 0540109009. And JN Interactive, as always, is where technology meets news to set the agenda. So we're talking football. And four years ago, Africans rallied around one country in the World Cup knockout uh, rounds. Despite hosting the tournament for the first time in the event's history, Africa continued to struggle in the group stage and only saw one manage a berth in the round of 16. And that nation was Ghana, and it carried the hopes of this continent. Despite falling short, the run was one of the most impressive in Africa's history at the world event. Ghana is arguably the best African side at this year's World Cup in Brazil. But the team is faced with a monumental group to overcome, uh, and this is the USA, Portugal, and Germany. As the Black Stars come up against uh, the Stars and Stripes of the USA, we are asking today, can Ghana make it a trouble? over the USA tonight. Bear in mind that both countries have different faces at the helm of affairs. Ghana has Chris Yapia and uh, her gaffer, whilst the USA have a former German international, Jürgen Klinsmann, as their coach. Chris Yapia will seek to be the first local coach to have won a game at the Mundial with the senior national team. And Klinsmann has been told to win this game or face the wrath of the American soul. What would the players do to win this all-important game? The Ghana and USA team held a news conference this morning. Take a listen. Very talented, skillful players, and we've got some players with pace. So, you know, as I said earlier, you always look at your opponent, you look at the players they've got, and then uh, you think of, okay, let me start with these players because... These are the weaknesses of my opponent, and you know, you use that to design the tactics that you're playing. But um, saying that, we normally combine both, either we rely on counter attacks or sometimes we go to run. Actually, before the ballot team, you know, I made so many interviews saying that, you know, if you go into the World Cup and you are afraid to meet Brazil or Germany or any you know, of the big teams, then it doesn't make sense taking part. You can as well say, oh, I've qualified, but we're not going. But once you go in, then you must be prepared to play any team that comes across. And uh, the most important thing is making sure that you prepare very well so that any team that you're playing, who bid, you know, you must make sure that, you know, you're prepared to face him. We're in a similar situation as they look at the match against Ghana as a must win with the Germans and the Portuguese to follow. Conditions in the area have been poor as Natal has been pounded with heavy rain since before the opening game at the venue between Mexico and Cameroon and it shows no signs of abating. But for USA coach Jürgen Klinsmann, his team will have to focus on playing in any conditions. Now if it's raining, if it's snowing, if it's uh Whatever, thunder and lightning or whatever, you know, this is, this is about, you know, football where you play at any circumstances, you know, field wet, field dry, heat, humidity, whatever, you know, both teams are on the field and they will give their best. So I'm not, we're not worried about that stuff at all. The United States will be hoping to make its third time lucky against Ghana, the Africans having had the upper hand against the Americans in recent years. Team USA are aware that expectations back home are high for a good showing in Brazil. Yep, and that is what they've all been saying. This is a crunch match for both of us. And I am praying, fingers crossed, that Ghana goes third time lucky and beat our U.S. counterparts. But you see, we have a lot of people here in Ghana. And uh, my colleague, Gifty Ando Apia, actually caught up with the uh, ambassador, Ambassador Kretz, American ambassador to Ghana, to ask um, about um, what he thought, his prediction for tonight. Let's take a listen to him, too. <laughs> 
with a very, very deep heart and a very sad countenance, I have to say, that the United States will emerge victorious 3-2. to two. You know, may the best team win, and uh, again, uh, I, I hope that in the next World Cup, uh, the United States and Ghana are able to be put in different groups so that we can meet in the final and have a real... A real Isn't he very humorous? Of course, he wants us to be in different groups so that we can play each other. And even if we play each other in different groups, I am sure that we'll still beat USA all over again. That was fantastic, absolutely. And um, Ifuakwa Harrison, who is with our team here, is actually in Brazil as we speak. And she has been catching up with the Ghanaian fans in Brazil to ask the expectation for tonight. Let's take a listen to them also. When we come back, I'll take some of your comments that have been trending on social media. Um, I'd like to apologize. I think the sound there is very terrible. I would uh, take some comments whilst we fix that and then bring it to you because it is exciting. You don't want to miss that sound. If you miss it, then you'd have missed the whole fun of it. So we're taking it off. I'll take some comments now. We would repair that and then I would uh, take it back. And uh, the guys of the, the U.S. Uh, you know, fans in Brazil have also shared their expectations with us. And um, there are some really, really funny bits that i like for you to listen to. But uh, let's take some comments now. And uh, the, the post just said that uh, Ghana opens uh, their World Cup campaign against the USA today. And we're asking, can Ghana make it a treble over the USA tonight? And uh, about the Frank Hatman starts. MT, absolutely yes. We shall surely overcome the Yankees today. Defeat na live, victory na show. Go Ghana, go Black Stars, God bless our homeland Ghana. I like the ring of that. Christian Salvo, yeah. Marian, I think that by all means we will surely beat USA because we have met, um, oh, we have what it takes to beat them, and this is not the first time we're meeting, so we know them very, very well. I hope you watch the match between Germany and Portugal. That's what I want our own black stars to do. Go Ghana, go black stars. They, Jacob just said, yep, he believes that we can do it again. Say to Sunday, Yakubu, big yes, we can do it. Uh, this reminds me of uh, the Obama campaign, yes, we can. So this is our own Ghanaian campaign, yes, we can. Salim says, yes, why not? Newton Jefford, Marion, I said it before and I'm saying it today, that Ghana is going to win by four goals to one. Go Black Stars, go Ghana. Majid Awudi says, we hope so. But hey, the worst should be 1-0 against USA. Maria Winiba Network is disturbing me, Papa. <laughs> I hope Winiba Network actually um, comes back so you can stay tuned. Wisdom says, we're winning by three goals to netting. Hey, it is your netting there. Uh, Lydia says, so for sure. Abraham says, yeah, Ghana is winning. Kennedy Amwakung. Uh, Kennedy says, uh, big no. Baba Musa Tamale, inshallah, Black Stars will beat USA because history is going to repeat itself tonight after four good years. Whether America likes it or not, inshallah, Ghana's worst performance will be a draw. Go Black Stars, go Ghana. And uh, Beniza says, these days when the exchange rate is two. Ghana CDs for one dollar. We used to win by two to one. Now it's five Ghana CDs to one. Really? The last I checked, it was three. And it was the, the pound that was five to one, or was it four to one? Um, so, ha ha ha, five one um, scoreline. Okay, Belinda says, I'm very optimistic Ghana will make it double double, but uh, where do we watch the match when GTV has suddenly decided? To bring disgrace upon Ghanaians by going off air. <laughs> they haven't gone off air, but I, I keep my opinions about that to myself for now. Asana Ali says, I will say yes, because we have all the skills, power, and winning mentality against them, but only and only with discipline. Um, George says, yes, it's a done deal for Ghana. And... Um, 
perhaps uh, I should pause here and take the ones that we have from Ghana. We've been out here in Accra to actually talk to all of you also uh, about your expectations of uh, the match today. Your expectations, the score line and all that. And so... So we'll do um, the Ghana one, and then when we're through, we'll go overseas and find out what the, Brazil, the people in Brazil are saying about the match. So let's take this one. Mm, between uh, Ghana and U.S., um, Tuna. Yeah, my prediction is Tuna. Come again, against you. Against you. You mean the scorers? I'm going to ask them more and then let's go um, uh, Kevin Prince Bart will also score one. Yeah, so let's pray. You know, I want the Samoa to start and then um, Kevin Prince Barty too. And then Rajman needs to also start, right? We should play a very good game and win. And it should be a comfortable win. I'm looking at we winning like 3 0 as Samoa I'm looking at uh, one of the IUs. I think these two people should be able to give us three years. Oh, from the defense line, I think John Boy, Harry Selafo, and then uh, Jonathan. The midfield, Rabiu, Muntari, yeah, and then the flanks, Jordan Ayu, uh, Didi Ayu, and then I think Asamanjan, and then uh, Boatin. I hope that Blaster, Ghana Blaster will win today three by three goals. Surely, surely, I know the first goal will come from Dede Ayu, and second, the same Dede Ayu, and the third will be Asamanjan. Yes, yeah, so that is what you have been saying. You're very, very optimistic about what is going to happen tonight. And I am over the moon. I am sure that uh, tomorrow when I come and stand here, I'll uh, probably uh, be sweating with joy that uh, Ghana actually made it. I was actually looking forward to the match being played like right now so that we'll be going through it together and then be screaming and going, ooh, ah, yeah, together. But unfortunately, it's going to be played at 10 p.m. when we are all home. So you guys will see my reaction. If it were live, you will see me perhaps going through the roof and then coming back down. I am very passionate about soccer as uh, football, if I can call it soccer too. So uh, let's take some more comments uh, whilst we wait to give you uh, the visuals that have come in from Brazil, from both the U.S. and the Ghanaian camps. So we'll take some more comments here. And uh, Nana says... Uh, Peter Kwakwa, <laughs> all whatever you call yourself, can you go? <laughs> I don't know. Why are you guys responding to each other? You should be talking to me. This is an interactive community, and I'm your team leader. So you don't talk to each other. You talk to me. Someone says something you don't like. Don't mind them. <laughs> Address me. Why? Don't worry. Uh, Yao says, I'm really disappointed at Multi TV. Don't be disappointed. I explained it to you. There are rights issues. We haven't done anything. Eh? Don't do that. You're making me sad already. But I'm sure you can catch it up somewhere. Catch up somewhere, and then we'll make it up to you sometime. Why? Um, Nana says, yes, we can. The scoreline would be 3-1 against the Americans. Uh -huh. You sit at home and start saying 3-1 against the Americans. If Ambassador Kretz were going to sit down and then invite all of you who are going for U.S. visas <laughs> and say anyone who spoke against U.S., I won't give you a visa, I'm sure you would deny Ghana. You'd be Peter. <laughs> Peter denied Jesus Christ, and you guys would have denied Ghana. Oh, no, 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 America will have to win. But I'm sure some of you too will be so patriotic and say, hey, if I'm not going to get a visa, I'm still going to support Ghana. But that's what, not what it is today. It's uh, patriotism at its best. And football unites all of us, irrespective of which of the device we belong to. Football is that uniting factor. And I love the way it brings us all together as um, Ghanaians. And uh, this one is coming from Kofi. And he says, the fact that the USA has been defeated twice in succession does not mean there will be easy opponents. Okay, you're warning us. If the Black Stars go into the game with such complacence, the least they will concede is three goals. This is a matter of pride and not of experience, okay? So everybody has something at stake. It's not because uh, you're more experienced than the other. Mark says Ghana is going to win massively by three goals to one against USA. Um, Kwame says suggest uh, substitute the figures of the CD to the dollar just at, uh, la at last four years, okay? Nice. That's uh, very, very nice. I'm hoping to, you know, do some WhatsApps 
as well so that I can switch and um, do some of your WhatsApps now. And uh, let's see what has been coming in. Okay, uh, let me pause here and uh, our videos are ready. We will take reactions from both the uh, Ghanaians in Brazil and Americans in Brazil. And when we come back, we'll complete by taking your WhatsApps. Don't go away. Stay with us. Development Fund, SDF, supports small, medium, and large-scale businesses to undertake skills upgrading of their staff and acquire innovative technology required to enhance their productivity and increase their competitiveness in the local and global market. Start